What's up guys, welcome back to the channel and welcome to another brand new Pokemon Sword and Shield Crown Tundra video. Today I'm going to be going in depth on why I don't think that Regigigas and Galarian Weezing are a good combination. Now, I had mentioned this video in a previous video where I used all the Regis on a single team and I, I sort of mentioned like, hey, I don't think that Regigigas Weezing is actually going to be all that viable despite so many newer players trying to hype it up as the next big thing. Uh, and I asked people if they wanted to see an analysis on that, and I got a lot of positive responses. Yes, I want to see that video. I don't know why you wouldn't think that. Uh, and I guess this is the video that you guys have been waiting for. So uh, let's get into it. Do me a favor. If you learned anything new, leave a like in the video, subscribe to the channel, and turn on notifications because I'll be bringing you guys some daily Pokemon Sword and Shield content. So if you don't know what the general strategy is, um, let's let's first take a look at Regigigas. Let's take a look at Regigigas first. This guy has got some pretty amazing stats, and he should. He's a legend. He's got 110 base HP, 160 attack, 110 defense, 80 special attack, 110 special defense, and 100 speed. Now, that guy has a really good speed tier, phenomenal bulk, and outstanding attack. Why aren't people using him in VGC? Well, the reason is his ability Slow Start, which makes it so for the first five turns, his attack and speed are halved, bringing him to pretty much be dead weight for the first five turns of a match. And yes, if you switch him out and switch him back in, it will reset the timer. It's not like you can just switch in, protect, switch out, switch in, protect, switch out, and then after five turns have a monster on the battlefield. That isn't how it works, unfortunately. So, when you combo him with Galarian Weezing, a Pokemon with a brand new ability called Neutralizing Gas, which turns off all abilities in the field, you get a situation where you have an absolute monster in the battlefield, enabled by a Pokemon next to it. Now, that might sound like a good idea on paper. Wow, two Pokemon that just complement each other so well that one becomes an unstoppable beast as long as the other's in the field. I want you to think about this critically. If you have a giant Pokemon in the field that could destroy another Pokemon in a single hit, being enabled entirely by the Pokemon next to it, which one should you target? It's the Pokemon next to it. Once the Weezing goes down, this thing absolutely falls apart. And it's for a couple of reasons that I'll be getting into as we get further into the video. Uh, I'm not sure how long it's going to be. It might not be like that long of a video, but it might be a little bit longer because I have a lot to say on this. Let, let's go ahead and get into it. Let's start off talking about Weezing, because this isn't so much a problem with Regigigas as much as it is a problem with Weezing. So Weezing has some pretty great stats as well, however, it's only really bulky on the physical side and completely because of its defense stat and not so much of its low HP. Weezing has 65 HP, 90 attack, 120 defense, 85 special attack, 70 special defense, and 60 speed. It's slow, it's physically defensive, it can hit decently hard, I guess 85 on the special attack is okay. It can hit decently hard there, uh, but it's very frail on the special side. Now here's the thing, uh, if you're running Regigigas Weezing, it's all about keeping Weezing on the field while Regigigas runs wild. So Weezing has a couple of options for staying on the field, and none of them really suit it very well. I'm going to be going over each of the ways you could sort of get it on the field and have it stay there, um, but they all have downsides to them essentially. So the first way is objectively the worst in my opinion. If you were to run an assault vest on your Weezing, it's, it's just the worst way to run it, and here's why. Weezing has to stay in the field. And because of that, you can't switch it out, which is one of the best defensive tools you have in Pokemon. One of the absolute best defensive tools you have in Pokemon is to switch out your Pokemon and have another one eat the hit. Weezing can't do that in that situation. So what's your next best defensive tool? Your next best defensive tool is to click Protect to minimize the damage you take, whether it's a max move or just completely negate all damage from non-max moves. If you run an Assault Vest to try to fix your special defensive bulk, you're not able to do either of those two things. You can't switch out the Weezing because it makes Regigigas dead weight, and you can't protect because you have the Assault Vest equipped. And, and it still doesn't fix the issue that much because a Tapu Lele will still one-shot you with Psychic. So that, that's the main issue there. It, like You can't run an Assault Vest and expect to do well with this. On top of that, Weezing has no access to its other good support moves like Will-O-Wisp. Uh, so it just becomes sort of two Pokemon that function well for the first turn, but as soon as the Weezing dies, it, it's, just, it's just over. The next set that you could try to run is a special defensive set with Protect. Uh, now, once again, the issue is you still get one-shot by things uh, when you're not running physical defense. 
Things that can outspeed Regigigas and one-shot the Weezing include Landorus Incarnate, Max Steel Spike Cinderace, and Max Steel Spike Kartana. And even if you were to run bold Max Defense, the Kartana will still one-shot you and outspeed the Regigigas with Max Steel Spike. So that, that's a huge issue too. Objectively, the best way to run the Weezing is going to be with a Focus Sash and whatever defensive stat spread fits it the best. I haven't explored what exactly these Weezing will have to run to survive these hits, uh, besides bold max defense or, you know, calm max defense or max special defense. Uh, but either way, there are huge issues with the defensive side of Weezing. So if you were to run the Focus Sash, it would at minimum, at minimum, guarantee you two turns. Unless, of course, uh, your opponent decides to double into you uh, with their Pokemon and just, you know, get rid of it on a turn you decide not to protect. Uh, or if your opponent manages to one-shot you through the protect and set up Hail or Sandstorm to KO you. Those two things would also remove the Weezing. And a smart opponent will always go for the Weezing first, in my opinion. In fact, if you decide to protect your Weezing turn one and just protect every other turn to make sure Regigigas can attack, you're still leaving Regigigas open to a lot of awful things that could happen to it. For one, Burn. Burn would not only cut your attack in half back to where it was prior to Slow Start getting removed, but once Slow Start's completely removed, your Regigigas is entirely useless. That is a huge issue with this team. Burn is such a big thing that can mess it up. And no, you can't just switch in something to follow me the hit, because guess what? That would involve either switching out Regigigas, restarting the turn, or restarting the timer, or switching out Weezing, restarting the timer. Uh, so that's a huge issue. Uh, Weezing isn't fast enough to taunt the things that want to burn Regigigas, except maybe if there's a slower Incineroar in the field that maybe is running Willows for some reason. That's a huge issue with the team. And yeah, like Weezing just has very few defensive options here. On top of that, I, I did the math, and as it turns out, if you were to have this Weezing go down and the timer go back up, Regigigas becomes much worse of a liability on your team than you might think. It has 160 base attack. When you max that out and run a Jolly Nature, which is probably the optimal way to run it so you can get the most out of the speed, uh, you hit 212 attack, which is a decently high attack stat. Like, no items boosting that, that is really, really high. It's gonna hit things really hard with max strike. Now, if you were to have slow start activate, it doesn't lower your 160 base attack to 80 and then add on the EVs from there. That is not how Pokemon will calculate the attack stat. As it turns out, it will just cut the 212 attack stat in half, which is, you know, what I expected, but some people think that it's the base attack that gets cut in half. So your 212 becomes a 106. That is absurdly low. For reference, if Poplio was a normal type, and used Body Slam, it would be doing the exact same damage to this Tapu Koko as Slow Start Regigigas would. Poplio, base 54 attack. That is how much damage you're doing. Your Regigigas essentially becomes a base 54 attack stat Pokemon. And I didn't check the speed, but you should know it, it is it is quite slow. It is quite a slow speed. Uh, let me let me see. So 167, you cut that in half uh, and you drop the decimal. What what does that turn to? That turns into like. 84 or 83 i think 83 yeah so you get 83 speed which is also very slow you're not going to be outspeeding anything in fact your wheezing naturally will outspeed that i believe even with no speed investment let me double check right here yeah it, it hits 80 speed so you will still be outspeeding your wheezing but not by much so that's that's just a huge issue with the team overall like those two pokemon it's it's more of an issue of removing the wheezing from the field and then dealing with the regigigas and like i said there are so many pokemon that just destroy it landorus cinderace celesteela kartana that just absolutely destroy these pairs and are common in the format that it, there's just no point in running it uh i don't want to say that it is something that only bad players will run because obviously players will explore new things in the format. Players should explore this. I encourage players to explore this and try to figure out how to optimize it, but it becomes a very roundabout way of building a team that would function better uh, if you just ran something else. And I guess the best way to put it is when people try to tell me to run Weezing and Golisopod when I want to run a Golisopod team, I, I tell them this exact thing. This is, this is what I've come up with to justify me not running Weezing and Golisopod on my Golisopod teams. If I were to run Weezing, and Glycepod, insert Regigigas for Glycepod, I am running two mediocre Pokemon to make one decent Pokemon. And if either one of them goes down, I am left with a mediocre Pokemon. So why wouldn't I just run one mediocre Pokemon and one good Pokemon? You end up with more 
by doing that. And that might be like a simplification of it overall, and maybe there's more depth to it, and I'm, I'm sure there is, but the fact of the matter is, Weezing works better for turning off your opponent's abilities. It works good for turning off Levitate on Rotom, it works well for turning off Speed Boost on Blaziken, Libero on, Cil on Cinderace, Beast Boost on Kartana, that's what it's meant to do. You should not be using it to turn off your own ability to make a, a halfway decent Pokemon as long as the Weezing's in the field. So yeah, uh, that, that's my opinion on Regigigas. Uh, I think that there is probably a way you could run it. I encourage you guys to try your best to run it. I think that uh, you guys should try your best to, if, if you really believe in the strategy, do your best to optimize it, prove me wrong in tournament, uh, use it well, and send it to me, because I want to be proven wrong. I want Regigigas Weezing to be good, but unfortunately, I, I just can't convince myself otherwise. So yeah, uh, that's the video. If you disagree, let me know in the comment section down below. Uh, leave a like if you enjoyed or learned anything new. Subscribe to the channel, turn on notifications, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.